Hello, hello, more dimmers here and welcome to Chessable Masters 2020, day 4 um, of the quarterfinals, two exciting mini matches uh, in one Ding Liren played against Hikaru Nakamura and uh, in another one Anish Giri against Alexander Grishuk um, and as Anish Giri had just a birthday and he played during his birthday, uh, I would like to uh, give some tribute to Anish and uh, wish him the happy birthday, uh, so I'm gonna show you um, uh, one of his games. So Anish Giri, uh, very interesting uh, international, truly cosmopolitan person because he is half Russian, half Nepalese. He was born in Russia. He was raised in Japan. He lives in Netherlands and he has a Georgian wife. So that's Anish Giri. Uh, his rapid ranking 2731. He is now 26 years old. And he's gonna play as black. And his opponent, Alexander Grishuk, chess veteran, Russian grandmaster, his rapid ranking 2784. He is 36 years old and he's gonna play as white. At the end, I will show you all the scores and what happened during that quarterfinals. It was pretty exciting, so stay tuned and without further ado, let's see what happened on the board. We have e4 by Alexander Grishuk, e5, knight on f3, knight on c6, bishop c4 and bishop c5. Duo Copiano and as Anish Giri is one of the best experts of Duo Copiano in the world and he loves that opening, he knows a lot about that and a lot of ideas. He definitely knows how to play. However, this game is a slightly different and because of that it's also very interesting. We have c3, knight on f6, this is everything the theory. Uh, we have d3, d6, bishop on g5 and now h6 kicking the bishop. Bishop on h4 um, and now two main lines, a6 and g5 can be played here. Uh, and they are pretty similar. Actually, uh, sometimes the, the move just, you know, um, switch, but uh, they lead to the very similar position. So, for example, g5, bishop on g3 and a6. So this is pretty normal. a4 uh, and after bishop on a7, knight b on d2 and uh, just castle, castle and the game can continue. It was played plenty of times. However, here... Uh, Anish Giri goes for a different system, a5. a5 is, is not really played in these lines and especially it's not really connected, connected with g5. But Anish Giri went for that and uh, let's see how what happened on the board. We have knight b on d2, bishop on a7 uh, and now h3 by Alexander Grishuk taking away the g4 square from the light square bishop. And now this light square bishop doesn't have really, you know, the squares to go. Uh, could go here theor theoretically, however, uh, these pawns were already moved, so that would really weaken the light squares um, around, the, around the king. So probably not the best idea. That means this bishop has to be developed to d7. So uh, that can be a problem. We have g5. So as I said, connected these two uh, systems into one. We have bishop on g3 and now castle by Anish Giri. Uh, and we have one game in the database where knight on h2 was played and it was very very strange game because black started to attack, white bring the, the knight back, uh, then this bishop have to retreat to h2, this knight were jumping over there uh, and white won that game, however uh, white had the 2600 ranking and the opponent only 24, so that was, you know, uh, at least two classes difference in the, in the strength of players, so we cannot say that this is the right way to continue. Alexander Grishchuk played more... Uh, solid move definitely queen on e2 with the idea of castling on them on the queen side so we're gonna have very sharp game and i would like to uh, tell you also what happened in the first games because uh, in the first game we had the draw then anish giri won as black that's interesting he won as black then alexander grishuk uh, 
couldn't deliver the, the win. We had the draw and this was the must win situation for Alexander Grishuk and he play as white and he's getting better position. So he definitely needs to go for something very sharp. This is why uh, he chose the, the long uh, castle and uh, and yeah, white gonna attack on the king side and black gonna attack on the queen side that's the main idea however look what happened in this game we have king on g7 by anish giri castle uh, as planned and now bishop on d7 as this bishop have to be developed somewhere uh, we have bishop on b5 now by grishuk queen on e7 and now bishop on h2 so uh sasha probably prepares the the, the storm of the pawns on the on the king side uh, we have a4 and now this pawn is under attack however taking it maybe it's not really the greatest idea for example bishop c5 uh, the bishop is under attack bishop b3 and black gonna have some uh, really nice counterplay and attack on the open a file which could be dangerous uh, so we have just a3 just to stop any any a3 moves uh, and now Anish Giri said uh, in the interview he completely mess up he doesn't have any counterplay counterplay uh, and he didn't know what to play here he chose knight on b8 the engine suggests bishop on c5 for example this way knight on f1 and then just kick this this bishop uh, play b5 uh, and rook on b8 and continue uh, to attack on the on the queen side that would be in the spirit of the of the opening of the of the principles and of the situation in this mini match so uh, this was definitely possible however we have knight on b8 so anish giri plays more in the passive way uh, and that sometimes can be very dangerous because now we have d4 uh, e takes on d4 c takes on d4 and white got all this center and it's pretty uh pretty dangerous now uh we have knight on c6 and here grish took play e5 however he, he could uh, improve the position of the pieces first as black really doesn't have any counterplay and have to wait so for example queen on d3 control this diagonal which can be very dangerous in some lines uh, and bring the rook behind the pawn and then attack on the on the e-file so for example bishop on b6 you cannot really find the, the better move rook d on e1 and then e5 is much more dangerous as the queen is still on the e-file maybe can move to d8 but you know the position of black would be really really bad uh, however we have e5 immediately it looks like Grishuk really wants to win. We have D takes on E5, D takes on E5 and Knight on D5 as the Knight was under attack. Uh, and now Knight on E4. So this is also the idea of pushing um, E4 pawn, making a space for the Knight. Now Knight can jump, for example, to F6. And as I said, the Queen on D3 would be very dangerous. For example, would, you know, uh, look at the H7. That would be some mating ideas even over there. Uh, for now, the knight is under attack. So we have bishop on e6 defending. Uh, and now, uh, still... Uh Rook on d3 probably building the the pressure in the center would be the best idea here uh rook f on d8 just double the rook on the open file and they continue the attack so there is no rush here however uh, very interesting in the interview uh, anish giri said i was hoping for rook on d5 rook on d5 uh, and after bishop on d5 uh, knight on f6 uh, and then I wanted to play bishop a2 okay like Jan Nepo Nepomniashi move where where Nepo you know played bishop on b1 uh, if you haven't seen that game check over there I, I link um, I link to that game that was you know one of the most beautiful game of the tournament so um, definitely beautiful move uh, however Peter Fiddler asked him, but what's the what's the reason? Why to sacrifice the exchange here? 
and um, there, there is no reason is there is this uh, you know so so dangerous or or, or something and uh, Anish Giri said um, may, may, maybe I just uh, you know overwatch at this at this position and there is nothing over there but but I like this idea so it's interesting always to listen from the super grandmasters what they have in the mind not like you know always the best of the best plans but sometimes they have some some ideas like this uh, so very nice that he shared that we have rook h on e1 so instead of rook on d3 rook h on e1 immediately uh, and now rook f on d8 and here in this position uh y still shouldn't rush it's uh, they still have a bit of initiative however black starts to catch up uh, and there are some interesting moves in the position already so what to play here probably g4 maybe move the maybe move the knight maybe bring another pawn maybe even attack with h4 uh, continue the attack or maybe in the center uh, move the king first uh, to b2 just to avoid you know uh, all of this stuff uh, and then continue the game however we have queen on c2 uh, and here Anish Giri uh, starts to feel okay now I have some counterplay and he almost immediately play knight c on b4 uh, with tempo with attack on the on the queen so of course we have a takes on b4 uh, knight takes on b4 and here uh, Peter Spiedler actually showed a beautiful line, beautiful line, uh, queen on e2, as the queen has nowhere to go. These squares are controlled by the, by the bishop, this by another bishop, this square also is controlled indirectly uh, because of the tactics, so also not possible. Uh, queen also cannot go to, to b1, as that actually would be, uh, would be a checkmate, so also not possible. So uh, the only square, also these squares are controlled by the rook, so a queen on e2 and now very interesting a3 and Peter Fiedler uh, said have you have you seen that and then Anish said yeah 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 I, I saw that I saw that but uh, but Sasha didn't play a uh, queen on e2 but this is very interesting so look at this uh, the idea is of course push the push the pawn uh, and then just queen and checkmate the opponent as these squares are controlled by by black so not much choice b takes on a3 and now knight on a2 with check King on b2, uh, defending a3, but then queen a3 with check. Look at this. King on a3, bishop on d4 with check. So sacrificing the queen already. That would be beautiful. And if bishop on a4, uh, then actually rook a4. Okay, sacrificing the, the, the rook. And after king on a4, rook a8. Okay, and look at this. This is a checkmate. Believe me or not, this is a checkmate. The knight controls um, the dark square. These dark squares are controlled by the bishop. These also are controlled. So everything is controlled and we have a checkmate by uh, by the pawn. That would be beautiful. The problem is actually white have different move. Bishop on a6. Bishop a6 and save the day. Because now uh, black doesn't have much choice. So rook on a6 with check and still with the mating ideas. But... Queen a6, so white would be forced to give back the material. However, knight d4, and as you see, extra knight, extra rook, that's enough to win the game. So it would not work. However, uh, as you see, very, very beautiful idea. Uh, Alexander Grishuk, however, uh, he sees that something dangerous is going on. So he played the best move in the position, rook on d8 sacrificing his queen or exchanging the queen for two rooks but not exactly because now we have knight on c2 a rook on a8 and now knight on e1 and here is the critical moment of the game what would you play as white can you find the only defensive move uh to still have a chance to actually draw or even win the game because the game is completely crazy and it's very easy to, to blunder something, especially in the rapid game. While I enjoy my cup of tea. So believe me or not, the only move in the position, the only move in the position is knight f on d2, defending the knight. Okay, now these knights defend each other so this is the only way to deal with this position and now black cannot play any you know 
any easy move like, okay, knight g2, I'm gonna take the, the pawn and all gonna be fine. The problem is knight f6 and checkmate is coming. You see that? This is a this is a checkmate, very complicated position, very rich position. So if you play something like h5, making the space for the king, still bishop d3 and now knight h5 followed by the rook on h8, still checkmate is coming. So black doesn't have a choice, have to give back the material, um, queen on f8, and then white just win the pawn, uh, check again and then get the queen for the rook and win the game because being up the, the minor piece usually is uh, enough to win the game. However, uh, black has only one move which still gives the hope to win. Uh, and it's not easy to find. However, bishop on f5 with the idea of going to h7 and control um, the g8 square. So that would not be a checkmate on the board. So, uh, for example, king on d1 going after the, the knight. Uh, and now bishop on h7, uh, knight on f6 and, pro for example, queen on c5. Uh, and now the position is really complicated. Knight on e8, for example, uh, king on g6. Now this bishop is under attack, so bishop on e2 first, because this knight still controls d3. So you see the position is completely crazy. Uh, and now black can of course play a3 with the idea of a2, very dangerous. Uh, and then king on e1 and the game can continue however it's still a lot of tactics here for example bishop on f2 uh, winning the the rook uh, or exchange uh, and white gonna have three minor pieces for the queen uh, and it's still you know very unclear what can happen in the game the engine uh, suggests that the position is equal it's equal but both sides have to play very precise so this is definitely unplayable by by human four minor pieces and the queen dancing somewhere around really difficult position for both of the sides and yeah that would be just just insane if if this happened in the board however alexander grishuk uh low on time he takes on e1 the problem is this is final mistake and now he cannot do anything queen on b4 forking both of the knights and the bishop so uh that's the best move in the position uh, we have knight on d3 now attacking the the queen and queen takes the the knight on e4 now uh, attacking g2 uh, and trying to also win the material on the on the king side uh, we have rook on a7 winning some material and now c6 kicking the bishop uh, which defends this knight so as you see, still very complicated. We have rook on a4 and after queen on g2, Alexander Grishuk resigned the game. Uh, so Anish Giri got the second win and uh, he just advanced to the semi-finals. And why did he resign? Because both of the bishops are under attack. Also this pawn uh, cannot be defended. So for example, if bishop on g3 first take the, the bishop with tempo, so uh, rook on d4, take this pawn and this pass pawn gonna win the game. Uh, black now has uh, the queen for the uh, knight and the, and the rook uh, and white doesn't have any counterplay to, to even think about the, the winning the game. So this is why Alexander Grishuk in this position just resigned the game. And as I said, uh, I would like to show you the, the, the all the scores. So here we go. Anish Giri make for himself the best birthday gift. Uh, he won, eliminated Alexander Grishuk and he gonna meet with the semi-finals with Jan Pomniashi. But Magnus Carlsen is still waiting for his opponent because this is what happened in quarterfinals mini matches between Ding Liren and Hikaru Nakamura is just insane. Uh, Ding Liren won the first mini match and I show you the, the game so if you are interested you can check it uh, and Hikaru Nakamura won another but this mini match was just insane in the first game we had the draw then Hikaru Nakamura won as black uh, then we had another draw and then Ding Liren and in, in must win situation he won 
uh, against Hikaru Nakamura. Uh, and then we had the two blitzes instead of rapid games, two blitzes to decide who gonna uh, win this mini match. And Ding Liren won as black. Can you imagine that? A lot of emotions. So uh, now Hikaru Nakamura had to win as black. Uh, and he delivered that. So at the end we had the Armageddon game where Ding Liren chose to play as black and draw the game. However, Hikaru Nakamura won. This is why we have 1-1 one, one in mini matches. So we still gonna have one quarterfinals game and Magnus Carlsen is still waiting. Whoever gonna win, Ding Liren or Hikaru Nakamura, they can say they had the most insane uh, you know, path to the to the semi-finals or even to finals because first they have to play a very difficult uh, opponent then they have to play, you know, the boss Magnus Carlsen and then maybe they have a chance to get to the to the finals just insane, this tournament is uh, really great, a lot of emotions, a lot of interesting games so uh, if you like this video press like if for some reason you don't like it, press unlike and uh, if you want to see more games from that tournament, press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.